Hello, how are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Where are you calling in from? Uh, the Sub Pop Warehouse and a little side office storage space where there's a computer. <laughs> okay, nice. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, my name is Antara Holloway. I'm a feature writer, mix a uh, features writer at the Mixdown. And of course, we all know the famous Mark from Mud Honey. Um, so let's get started. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first things first, we know the band is kicking off a 31 leg fall tour on October 12th. So we just want to know, what do you want the overall feel to be for this upcoming tour? Fun. Uh, the overall feel for any tour or show should be fun. Nice. Um, why does this feel like the perfect time to tour for you guys? Uh, the fall is generally good. You know, it's not too hot and it's not too cold. <laughs> what did I just um, say? You know, it's just, you know, the snow isn't happening yet and it's not in the middle of a blazing, insane summer like we just had. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. I was like, the last time you guys had a tour this long was summer of last year, right? Well, we we did about five weeks in Australia, which was also in the fall down there, our spring. Oh. Um, so that's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, it just kind of works out because Guy, our bass player, moved uh, back to Australia. So it works for him to come out at this time. Okay, nice. Um, so speaking of the band all getting back together, uh, so I know that you guys have said that the band is used to typically writing songs while sitting in a room, staring at each other, and just playing some instruments. And you've even mentioned that everyone in the band is actually friends. So instead of poker nights, you guys have the band. What is the creative process like now, and how has it changed as the members have continued to grow together? Uh, well, we haven't really, our, our practices since the last record and since guys moved out of the country have only been right before tours when he come, when we all get together and we're just getting the songs ready to go uh, on these tours. Uh, so we haven't actually indulged in much in the creative process since he's moved to Australia, which was like in June of 2022. <laughs> oh, okay. So that kind of like blends into my next question because I was going to ask if the band is still actively in recording at the moment or just mainly gearing up for the tour. But it sounds like you guys are just kind of getting just gearing up for the tour. Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> um, okay, so besides having to record the album in nine days, what makes Plastic Eternity different from all the band's other projects? Well, it, it's just the newest record, you know. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's any different. It's the same four people that it's been since the early two thousands. <laughs> uh, it's just our new batch of songs. Um, do you feel that you know I'll, I'll leave it up to the listeners to decide if it's different and if it's good or if it's bad or if they like it or not it's that's just all completely out of my control yeah so it's like once you put it out there you're like I'm done with it we made it for you let me know what you think well we're not done with it we still play the songs right. but yeah we don't uh um you, you know you can't uh you can't um, influence what other people's thoughts. I mean, you can try, but it, it, it's not really worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> understood, understood. Okay, so how has the release of this latest album plastic eternity serve the band and what does it say about the direction that you guys are moving in going forward well i mean it serves the, the latest release and it's our latest batch of songs and uh the direction i mean there there are there were a couple of things on the new record that were new for us 
uh, and Dan wrote a lot more, Dan's our drummer, and he wrote a lot more like guitar parts uh, than, than he had in the past. I mean, he's been playing guitar for a long time, but he just sort of kind of kept it to himself. Um, and I think he just sort of feels more confident in bringing his ideas forward. And some of those ideas are really, really cool. Uh, and uh, for instance, the song one or two, which is more kind of like this floaty, acoustic -y sort of thing with synthesizers, um, that that came from him. And also the riff from Little Dogs. What do you? Why do you feel like he's suddenly come out of his shell and he's like, "Hey guys, like I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put in." I, some... I don't, I don't know. Maybe he thinks uh, the stuff the rest of us come up with is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I completely doubt it's that, you know, you guys have been around for a long time. <laughs> okay, well, um, you, as you know, Mud Honey is often credited as one of the foundational pioneers of the Seattle kind of grunge scene. Are there any bands that have risen up behind you guys that you would also say are carrying the torch for the genre? Oh, I don't know. I don't give a shit about the genre. <laughs> 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 you know, I mean, like there's, bands that I like and love that you know have come after us but I don't I'm not worried about like what their their genre is or what what it is they're you know trying to do if they like it I like it yeah so who are you listening to right now I guess would be a better question um I've always got piss jeans and Mets uh, in the in the mix of things. They're like uh, two of my favorite sub pop bands, and uh, and Obits and Hot Snakes. Been listening to a lot since like Rick Froberg passed, um, and I was listening to a lot of them quite a bit before. But I mean, that's just a whole level of sadness. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I always get kind of stuck on this. Uh, there's a band called Skull Practitioners out of New York that I like. Uh, I don't know. It sounds like the playlist is is still going though. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. a few names on there. Yeah. Um, so. Transitioning back to your music, I know a great deal of Mud Honey's music has a social commentary aspect to it, like Move Under America, humans, Move Under, Human Stock Capital, and of course, the politically heavy morning in America, to name a few. I know that you guys say Mud Honey isn't actually a political band, but would you say that the band feels that it has a sort of social responsibility to lean into? Or is it just a case of real life bleeding into the music? I think it's real life bleeding into the music. You know, it's like you can't ignore what's going on around you. If you have any kind of empathy or awareness, you know. Yeah, it's just going to come out. And, 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 and you just can't. In, in these times, it just seems irresponsible to write a love song. Okay, except that could be an interesting take. Except to maybe a little dog. Yeah, which you guys, which is definitely on Plastic Eternity, you know, which honestly is something that I really appreciate because it's like this super like thought invoking music. And then you're like, but I love this dog. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, well, you know, like, I, the, the, like also same with digital garbage. There's like a lot of heavy themes. Uh, and you know a lot of frustration in, in the records and then like to lighten things up at the end like just to have like a like this world there are good things out there like you know like uh little dogs was just you know like that's it's, it's, it's a, one of the things we all find light and happiness in yeah and that's a universal thing so it's kind of just like let's end on a good note like kind of yeah thing. yeah yeah 
Um, so are there any significant moments in time, routines or rituals that you would say have contributed to the band's longevity? Um, not giving a shit about a career. Oh, interesting. What do you mean? Well, you know, for me, music is something that we do to uh, provide, you know, give us enjoyment, right? Right. And if you're trying to second guess what an audience might want to hear or try to tailor something in a certain direction that's maybe unnatural to you, then uh, you're sucking the enjoyment out of that. Mm. And, you know, we've all like just, we, even in the grunge heyday, we never thought that we would break through on the same level as like Pearl Jam or Nirvana or Alice in Chains or Soundgarden because, you know, we, we were aware of the history of bands like us. You know, like the, the Stooges, they probably, and the New York Dolls, they got signed to major labels and they probably thought, yeah, we have a chance, we have a shot. Clearly they didn't, but they didn't know it at the time. By the time we came around, we saw those records that we love and like how popular they were at the time. And, you know, we, we realized that would be our fate as well, at best. Oh, really? <laughs> so even when you guys were kind of at this, at the height of like your commercial success, like after Touch Me, I'm Sick, there wasn't anything that, there was never a feeling of like, let's keep this momentum going. It was kind of just like, the commercial success of Touch Me, I'm Sick was like, there was a thousand records pressed and they got played on college radio. You know, it wasn't like it had <laughs> never gotten the charts or anything. <laughs> Still, nonetheless, like you could, you guys could have still been, you know, unheard of everywhere, but you weren't. Like people knew who you were. You guys had like kind of like a cult following. So yeah, yeah. You know, we got very, very lucky. I mean, there, I think there were like hundreds of bands like ours around the country, probably around the world, that did not have friends who were just starting a record label that was about to be very successful. So we just, we were kind of you know, in the right place in the right time and super lucky. None of us at the time anticipated that we would still be around, God forbid, 35 years later. Doing long tours, 31 long <laughs> yeah. tours, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of nuts. So you would say the significant moment was basically being friends at the right, having the right friends at the right time. For sure. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So that kind of leads me on to my next question. So with over 31 years in the game with um, Mud Honey, I'm sure there's a lot of lessons that the band has, lear has learned along the way. What's a piece of wisdom or advice that you'd give to the version of the band that released Touch Me, I'm Sick back in 1988? Uh, the, I, I would say just kind of keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> it's working. With that, same, that, with that same attitude, you know? Like, uh, and, you know, keep a sense of humor about things. Okay. Can you the, world, the, world is, the world is absurd enough so you know like the only thing you can you can uh i mean the way i deal with it the the overwhelming terribleness of it is to just try to find like weird dark humor where i can i'm also a fan of weird dark humor where i can get it so that makes a lot of sense. But I'm sure that you were probably even back then, probably still just trying to find some humor where you can find it. So is that just something that you've just taken from there throughout life? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I, I think that's just sort of my personality. <laughs> Understood. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much with meeting with us at the Mix Down. And I hope you have a great day. Well, thank you, Antara. It's nice to be thank here. You, Mark. You too.